Hey everybody, welcome back to the Words of Life podcast with Kevin Bruni and myself, Adam Kitt. Hello, Mr. Kevin. How is your week going, my friend? Uh, It is going all right. How are things with you out there? I know it's a busy week for you, right? (laughs) It's it's absolute crazy town right here. Um, I've mentioned it before, but this is finally the week where my daughter, (laughs) my second oldest, is getting married uh, to her fiancé, Curtis. We have lots and lots of family and friends coming into town, and um, I mean it's a small family wedding for the most part, but we still have a lot of people coming into town. And um, you know, I'm I, I've I've built an arbor for the wedding ceremony, yeah. and uh, so that's been fun. I, I like to I like woodworking and things like that. This is the I was telling you offline. Yeah. This is the first um, real like decorative decorative (laughs) show piece that i've ever done it's not super ornate but you know it's got like curves on the end of the the boards and some of the beams have like arches cut out of them and things like that so i had to use a lot more attention to detail you know sanding down edges and covering this and that and making sure that you know if, if you're just building a deck, it's it doesn't have to be all fancy, you know. This is right, the, right. I mean, square cuts and you slap it down, and yeah, you want it to you look know? good, but it's not hard <laughs> to make it look good, right? Exactly. But this this has been really fun. I really, I'm, I'm proud of it. I, I'm I'm uh, I I think I could I could build these and sell them, you know. Yeah, there you go. Kind of neat. So, but it's been fun. But yes, it's been chaos. Um, you know, we had to like drive to Nashville on Saturday, and uh, we took advantage of being out there. Uh, we had to drive. To, to get Chris from the airport, yeah, yeah. flew in, and then um, uh, we went to the Avi Kaplan concert on Saturday. Um, I don't know if you know who Avi is, but he's a he's he's the he's the original bass singer of Pentatonix. Oh, okay, and he went uh, he, he left the group and went on a, on his own solo thing. And wow, what an amazing! <laughs> it was super small, intimate, yeah, yeah. venue. Uh, we were I don't know 15, 20 feet from him. You know, yeah. all standing room only, that sort of a thing. But um, so yeah, it's been a whirlwind. I'm I'm exhausted, and then I, I got invited <laughs> to um, to go out on the river today. Uh, one of the brothers has a he's a boat membership, like a okay boats out kind of a thing. Yeah, yeah. So he got a speed boat for the day and invited some of the guys from church out on on the on the river, and uh, had a lot of fun. But now I'm I'm like. Whew, I'm tired. You sat down. That's right. <laughs> I sat down. I'm like, man, I I could really go to sleep right now. But yeah, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. But I'm excited to uh, to jump back into our study. Um, so last uh, episode we finished the book of First John, and um, got to tell you, I'm I'm still adding to like notes that I'm that I created sure. and like finding more things to put into my sermon. Which if I keep adding things to it, it'll become like way too long you know you have to come people, multiple ones yeah you'll know, have people falling out of the out of the window sills and things like right. that but but it could be a, a fantastic series about really just doubling down on the idea that we're we're created in the image of god and and what does that mean you know how how can i recognize all of my talents that god gave me that are characteristics of him um and we see a lot of that through through first john you know that God is light, God is love. Yeah. Um, you know, in Him is no darkness. But you see a lot of this, this, um, you know, th- this confidence that we can have uh, in that. So, we, we, anyway, we finished First John, and um, for you, all, all in in uh, internet virtual land, land and yeah, <laughs> uh, we we decided to go. Since we're here, we're going to go ahead and tackle Second and Third John. Kevin, I thought about throwing in Jude as well, but if we did Jude, it's probably not long enough for a standalone episode. Um, but if we added all three in one, it'd be too long. It's too long. So we'll, right? at least, yeah. we'll at least tackle second and third John tonight. And um, and then uh, we'll go, I think, to the book of Hebrews. All right. Sounds good. So that's going to be really exciting. I'm uh, I'm really looking forward to that. So well, let's just dive right in. Um, oh, that's third. There you go. Second. There we go. Let's start at the beginning with with Second John, 
And I'm going to invite you to go ahead and, and just read this, um, this whole letter uh, from start to finish for us, Kev, and then we'll dive in and discuss it. Yeah, sounds good. Uh, so Second John, starting verse one, it says, the elder to the elect lady and her children, whom I love in truth, and not only I, but also all who know the truth, because of the truth that abides in us and will be with us forever. Grace, mercy, and peace will be with us from God the Father and from Jesus Christ the Father's Son in truth and love. I rejoice greatly to find some of your children walking in the truth, just as we were commanded by the Father. And now I ask you, dear lady, not as though I were writing you a new commandment, but the one which we have had from the beginning, that we love one another. And this is love, that we walk according to his commandments. And this is the commandment, just as you have heard from the beginning, so that you should walk in it. For many deceivers have gone out into the world, those who do not confess the coming of Jesus Christ in the flesh. Such a one is the deceiver uh, and the antichrist. Watch yourself so that you may not lose what we have worked for, but may win a full reward. Everyone who goes on ahead and does not abide in the teaching of Christ does not have God. Whoever abides in the teaching has both the Father and the Son. If anyone comes to you and does not bring this teaching, do not receive him into your house or give him any greeting. For whoever greets him takes part in his wicked works. Though I have much to write to you, I would rather not use paper and ink. Instead, I hope to come to you and talk face to face that our joy may be complete. The children of your elect sister greet you. Fantastic. So when I read through this, um, I, I kind of see it really in, in basically two, two, two basic sections um, outside of the greeting and the, the farewell at the end. Um, and so the first section is really just uh, 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 commending the, this elect lady and her children. Um, and then it is, you know, in that commendation about how, how, how much good work she's doing, we have a reminder of a lot of the things that, uh, we, we, that he uh, thematically wants to really make sure we're always keeping at the forefront of our mind. And that is, of course, that we love one another. Um, every book that John has written, I believe, mentions this 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 fact. So the Gospel yeah. of John, it's all over the place. First John, it was in, in there multiple times, and of course, here it is again. And so, um, and so we have this first section commending her about about how much good work she's doing, uh, that her children are walking in the truth. And we have the second section which is um, more of a specific warning. And reading through this, it, it gives me the feel that, kind of like in 1 Corinthians, where you know that Paul is answering specific questions um, that, were, that were given to him. Uh, you didn't know that by the, by the context uh, of, of yeah. the way he writes it and answering those questions. And it almost seems like, she was having uh, a challenging time because of her nature being super hospitable and, um, and, and all of this, that perhaps she felt inclined to offer hospitality to people that she should not have been offering to. So, um, so that's kind of a synopsis of, of the letter as I see it. How about you? Do you see anything different in terms of just the overall yeah, I think uh, I think that's right. Right, uh, you know, we had talked a little bit. It was, it was we're going to consider second and third John here tonight together, which is a good way to do it. Um, yep. That there is really this question of fellowship, right? Uh, this question of uh, who should we engage with and who not. And there, both of those uh, letters are about that topic. This one is warning about don't have fellowship with these types of people. And then third John's very much going to be about do have fellowship with these types of no, people. No, I'll be quiet. Um, and, and both of the types of people are people who are coming and bringing teaching. It's not just, you know, local brothers and sisters. It's, not, it's what we would call maybe traveling missionaries to use that term, right? People that have come through from some other place. Uh, and here he's, he's really warning her about there's certain ones you should watch out for. Uh, like you kind of mentioned um, this idea that love is, is prevalent. In fact, 
you know, as you think about that idea, which is going to uh, show up across all three as well, it's kind of the the reason we even attribute these to John, right? Like there's nothing, he calls himself the elder. So why do we call them second and third John, right? It's mostly because the the context and the words and the, the way he talks is so similar to first John. And that's so similar to the gospel of John um, that you we really go, these have got to be written by the same guy. There's, there's not a lot of, you know, he doesn't say like Paul does, right? Paul, the apostle, da, 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 right? Um, and so we don't see that kind of thing, but it's the context and the content um, that really that tells us this is this is who is writing these. It's all the same guy, um, and you'll see that really in Second and Third John. Uh, not only the beginning, the elder, but this idea thing. I'd rather not write in paper and ink, but I come to you right in face to face. And so, yeah, you know, whether he got questions from her specifically, I mean, First Corinthians, we know, says now concerning the things you wrote to me, right? Yep. Um, but at least in this one, we don't have that. But there's something he's he's concerned, and maybe he's concerned just like he was in First John. There are many false teachers that have gone out. I want to especially let you know this. Watch out for this. Um, and partly it may be that he was reminded, like he says in verse four, I rejoice greatly to find some of your children walking in the truth. So maybe he's recently talked with, um, you know, some of her children. Uh, yeah. And that's what either prompts the letter, just like, oh, I should write her a letter. Or they're saying something and he goes, oh, I should write her a letter uh, and just remind her of this thing. Um, hard to say, but it definitely... Uh, possible or, or plausible in that sense, uh, for sure. Abs absolutely. And so he, he reiterates um, this idea of, of truth and love. Yep. He, those are hand in hand. You know, you, you yeah. can't have truth without love and you can't have godly love without the truth because God is truth. Thy word is truth and God is love. And so they're, they're really... Sino you know, I wouldn't say synonymous, but they're they're necessary together. Um, so he he he, he, he blah, blah, tongue tied. Um, you see this phrase just to go back to what you were talking about the authorship. Um, at you know that we've had from the beginning, the commandment that we've had yep. from the beginning. I'm giving you a new commandment. Uh. At, not not as though I were writing you a new commandment, right? You, you see that time and time again uh, that we that we love one another, and so he's saying, yeah, and you're really good at this. You you are really great at this uh, the, uh, uh, at loving people and and being hospitable. Um, but verse seven: for many deceivers have gone out into the world, those who do not confess the coming of Jesus Christ in the flesh. So there is a, a very specific line in the sand that he's drawing. Yeah. And I, I think sometimes people take what, his, what he says, his commandment about how to um, deal with these people, and, and you kind of make broad assumptions beyond this one very specific line in the sand. And I like the way you put it in, in our conversation previously that you're either with Jesus or you're not with Jesus. And that, that's basically the, the criteria that we're talking about here. Yep. It's not about a lot of these, you know, cultural, historical lines in the sand that people have done with, you know, this split and that split and, you know, these debates and that debate and, and all those kind of things. At the end of the day, a lot of those have been based on basic opinion rather than gospel uh, definitive things. Yeah, and I think that's really going to be coming up in 3rd John, right? Like, yep. the, uh, you know, I don't, we'll, we'll save that a little bit maybe, but yeah. just if you look at that, why were those things happening? Is it really because you were not abiding in the teaching Christ or is it because you like to have the preeminence? Um, yeah. And that's uh, that becomes an important thing uh, when we kind of start drawing those lines. Because here, you're right, he tells her, as he did in, as we saw in first John, right? This yeah. is the antichrist. And, and again, that just means against Christ. And specifically here, if you say that Jesus did not come in the flesh, and I think really what that probably means is not that Jesus wasn't a person, right? Um, I think it's the coming of Jesus, the Christ in the flesh. Remember, that's not his last name, right? So it's, if, if you don't think that Jesus was the Christ in the flesh, 
right? Because there was apparently this teaching that the, the Christ could not have been of, of the flesh or of human, right? The divine could not inhabit the, the human form. Uh, and so that's kind of what seems to be happening here. You, if you say eh, Jesus didn't really come in the flesh, right? He was a spirit. He was whatever. Um, then that's, that's against Christ. That's against the message that he is the Christ because the Christ was going to be a, a physical human, you know, uh, fleshly figure. Yeah. Uh, and so he says, you can't have the Christ without him coming in the flesh. Um, and then like you say, you know, so is that the only line, right? Is the only line then if you come and you bring me some false doctrine, but it's not, Jesus didn't come in the flesh, then I have to accept you. Mm -hmm. Um, no, but we have to be careful of going to the other extreme of saying everything I disagree with is the line. Um, right. he says that in verse nine, right? The one who does not abide in the teaching of Christ. So there, there is some line beyond just Jesus didn't come in the flesh. Right. right, but it's got to be tied to: Are they bringing the teaching of Christ or not? Yep. And if the answer is no, they're not bringing the teaching of Christ. Then he says, "Right, okay. If anyone doesn't bring this teaching, don't receive them in your house. Don't give them a, a greeting. Uh, for the one who greets him takes part in his wicked works." Right. So that that's kind of this is your response if they meet this criteria of either directly denying Jesus didn't come in the flesh as the Christ, or they don't abide in the teaching of Christ. Uh, right. And, and cult cult culturally speaking, this is not just saying, Hey, yeah, it's not high in the marketplace. I didn't like, I have to be careful <laughs> of anyone I say hi to in the street. Right. Right. So hi to me. I can't say hi back till I know. Right. Uh, right. That's not, that's not what he's talking about. Here, this was a, a formal <laughs> greeting and really was, it was opening up your house to them and welcoming them. And by, by doing so, at that point, you know, you've basically, you know, taken them into your household almost. You're also taking a part in, in their wicked works because you're now, you know, enabling them or supporting them uh, in, in that work. Yeah. Um, and I think we'll see that again in, in third John, where it's this idea of, of helping the brethren who are coming along. And so when you're, you're giving them greeting, it's effectively helping them on their way and their mission and their work that they're doing. Yep. Uh, and so that's really what he's saying. Don't, don't do that. Right. Don't, yep. don't let these ones in your home. Don't feed them a meal. Don't let them hang out with you and stay with you while they spread their false doctrine. That's otherwise you're, you're partaking in that work, but we have to be careful there too. Cause I've, um, uh, I've seen Christians use the idea of, um, partaking in the, in the work of another and supporting it to justify all kinds of things they don't want to do. Let me give you a simple example. Uh, people will say, you know, I can't, I can't pay my taxes because if I pay my taxes and some of those tax dollars get used for things which are against the teaching of Christ, right? Then I'm supporting that. And therefore, you know, I'm righteous by not paying my taxes because some of the money is going to go to things that, that are against the teaching of Christ, right? Uh, this is not teaching that. Um, or sometimes you'll have people who will say, you know, and again, draw lines where you want to on this, but, oh, I don't shop at that grocery store because I know down the road, some of the agenda, right. And you're like, okay, well, if, unless you're going to find a place that agrees with everything you do, you, how are you going to eat? Right. So you yeah. draw your lines where you want, but don't use this verse necessary to say, you know, I, I absolutely can't because otherwise I'm partaking in their evil work. Yep. You know, I bought a sandwich. What, what they do with the funds after that is on them. Right. Yeah. Uh, so we have to be careful about stretching this verse too far as well, for sure. Absolutely. So in in the light of this, we know for sure he's, he's talking about providing hospitality, real hospitality, yeah. you know, taking them into your home and and um, and giving them, a, you know, a formal ceremonious type of a greeting. Um, and you just need to be to have this discernment and yeah. how we how we get to the point where we can have that level of discernment is what he says there um, in, uh, in verse eight, nine, sorry. Nine, yeah. It's everyone who goes on ahead and does not abide in the teaching of Christ does not have God. So whoever abides in the teaching has both the father and the son. Yeah. And again, we saw that a lot in, in first John, this idea of abiding in Christ and Christ abiding in you. That is not something that just happens once. It is an ongoing process that has to happen all the time. Paul said we have to renew ourselves daily, which includes buffeting my body and and you know being very very diligent in the studying of the word, so that we know what the true 
teaching of Christ is, and we can be on guard to not partake in the wicked works of people who are professing something that is not Christ and not of his word. Yeah, I think that's right. And Jesus talks about that a lot as well, again, in the in the Gospel of John. You know, I'm the vine, you're the branch, someone who abides in me, right? I mean, this this idea of abiding in Christ as the Father and the Son uh, is how we're going to get all of these, these benefits uh, from being in him and him in us, right? And that's how we're going to be able to, to discern, right, whether we should uh, accept the one or not. Um, but certainly there are there are clear cases here, right? Like there are very clear cases where it doesn't take a lot of discernment, right? You, <laughs> the one comes and says, Hey, I don't think Jesus really came in the flesh. I don't, we don't, <laughs> uh, yeah. I don't have to really figure that out. He's telling her <laughs> like this, this is not the, the case, right? Uh, yep. Don't, don't entertain such a thing. Um, you know, I do like this idea here in the middle too, which is interesting. Um, you know, verse five, six, uh, we've seen this a lot in John's writings, especially uh, about this command that we love one another, right? Uh, and this is love that we walk according to his commandments. Uh, and then, you know, this is interesting because the translations here vary quite a bit on the end of verse six, right? So this one here uh, has, this is the commandment, just as you have heard from the beginning, so that you should walk in it. And so that reading, you know, as I read that, it says, this is love that we walk according to his commandments. And this is the commandment that you heard from the beginning. So walk in it. Right. And so he's not really telling you what the commandment is in the back half. He's saying, just I'm reiterating, this is the command you heard from the beginning. Right. So he says, there's a command I have from the beginning, walk in love or love one another. This is the command from the beginning. Right. Some of the other translations actually render that a little differently. They'll say, um, you know, I'm not writing you a new command, but the one you have from the beginning, verse five, then verse six, this is love that we walk according to his commandments. And then this is the commandment, just as you heard from the beginning that you walk in love, right? And so he, it's, he's telling her what the command is in the back half. But interestingly enough, the back half is walk in love. And the first one is you should love one another. How do you do it? By keeping his commands. What are the commands? Love one another, right? Uh, which that really fits nicely with sort of the first John um, yeah. understanding, right? Where it says, we love God if we keep his commandments and his commands are not burdensome. This is the command that we love one another, right? Uh, which makes sense to me. That really seems to be John's sort of point. Um, but I do like that rendition a little bit because it suggests, like we had talked a lot about in First John, um, that we love God when we keep the commands, that we keep the command is to love, but it's not just, oh, I love you. It's walk in love, right? That that translation there lets yeah. us know that the, the loving one another is a walk of love. Uh, and we talked a lot about that, right? That that the love of the brethren is something you do. And that makes really good sense contextually because then as he goes forward, he says, be careful about doing for these false ones, right? Because yeah. when you do for these false ones, what you're doing is you're, you're giving them your love effectively, right? Uh, right? And so that really nicely ties all together that what he's concerned with is love is doing be careful what you do with these false teachers. Uh, well, so again, that, also, nice. you know, love, love is not just is not just doing, but the kind of love he's talking about is is doing what is best yeah, for that person. That is beneficial. Right. And so by pointing out to somebody their their false teaching, that is an act of love by dis by disputing what they're what they're teaching. Sure. Because hopefully you, the goal would obviously be would we would want them to change and to preach the truth, not to preach, you know, the, the, the false false teaching. Yeah. And that's an interesting thing, too. Right. Because you, um, you know, you, you, you look at what the case is here. Right. So in the you know, we, th we think about Acts maybe where uh, Paul goes along and he finds these ones who are teaching Jesus or they're teaching the baptism of John and, he, you know, this whole sort of conversation there. Uh, and he finds out they've just been not instructed fully. And so he corrects them. Mm -hmm. This case is a little different. In this case, is these are deceivers, right? right. <laughs> these are anti-Christ. Uh, they're not misinformed. These are ones who are perverting the doctrine. They know they're perverting the doctrine uh, for what ends are, are not stated. We can suspect uh given you know a lot of the writings of paul especially that most of those false teachers were doing it for the money uh mm -hmm. or for the prestige uh one of the two um yep. john doesn't say that here but that's been the case everywhere else right yeah. <laughs> uh, there he calls them deceivers right which was sort of not not and what i guess i'm saying is they're the deceivers they're not the deceived mm -hmm. right like 
those ones who are deceived, you instruct. And those ones who are deceiving, you rebuke, is what he's basically yeah. saying here. And for yeah. her, you know, an elect lady, the rebuke was just don't invite them into your home. Yeah. Right. It wasn't necessarily try and call them out or debate them in right. the public square. That sort of wasn't her place. It was, look, don't welcome them into your home. Don't, don't, you're part of the ministry that you're involved in. Don't be involved in it with these people. Uh, and, and that will be sufficient. Right. Uh, and yeah. then I have lots of other things I'd like to talk to you about, but this is the one he was concerned enough to write the letter and say, you know, I like to come to you and I'll talk to you, but you know, this thing I wanted to, to get to you, uh, get it ahead of time, if you will. Uh, and yeah, I'm send, sending it ahead, ahead of me. So, yep. Yeah. That's great. Uh, well, that's awesome. I think that's a, uh, you know, it's, it's a short book. It's got a lot of stuff and a lot of lessons we can learn in it, but, um, yeah, for sake of time, let's go ahead and jump to third John. Yeah, and if we kind of keep that in mind, right, that real key idea there about sort of withholding this fellowship from those ones who were against Christ, yep. and that's then really you'll see the mirror of that here in Third John. Absolutely. Okay, Third John, uh, verse 1, it says, The elder to the beloved Gaius, whom I love in truth. Beloved, I pray that all may go well with you and that you may be in good health as it goes well with your soul. For I rejoiced greatly when the brothers came and testified to your truth, as indeed you were walking in the truth. I have no greater joy than to hear that my children are walking in the truth. Beloved, it is a faithful thing you do. Uh, it is a faithful thing you do in all your efforts for these brothers, strangers as they are, who testified to your love before the church. You will do well to send them on their journey in a manner worthy of God. For they have gone out for the sake of the name, accepting nothing from the Gentiles. Therefore, we ought to support people like these, that we may be fellow workers for the truth. I have written something to the church, but Diotrephes, who likes to put himself first, does not acknowledge our authority. So if I come, I will bring up what he is doing, talking wicked nonsense against us, and not consent with that, and not content with that, sorry, he refuses to welcome the brothers and also stops those who want to and um, and puts them out of the church. Beloved, do not imitate evil, but imitate good. Whoever does good is from God. Whoever does evil has not seen God. Demetrius has received a good testimony from everyone and from the truth itself. We also add our testimony, and you know that our testimony is true. I had much to write to you, but I would rather not write it with pen and ink. I hope to see you soon, and we will talk face to face. Peace be to you. The friends greet you. Greet the friends each by name. Yeah, so you can really see here, like, clearly these are written by the same guy, right? I mean, it starts to be the elder, the end. I have much to say. I'd rather not I'd write a pen yep. and ink, but I'll see you face to face, right? Uh, it's it's very similar. Even some of the language, you know, that my little children, uh, this kind of stuff. And that's why everyone says, look, whoever wrote second and third John is the same guy. It's got to be the same guy as first John. That's got to be John because <laughs> of the, the correlation. Right. He, he was clearly a witness, uh, walked yeah. with Jesus. It's so closely related to the gospel of John. Yep. Uh, this has got to be the same guy, right? Um, and so here, you know, as you're kind of figuring out, you know, limited information, who's he writing to? Gaius, okay, but that's a pretty common name, right? Um, where is he writing it from? All these kinds of things, hard to say. But as best we can tell, likely at the same time, um, history and sort of early tradition tells us that John, again, take this for what it's worth, um, you know, was based maybe in Ephesus in his later life, uh, did his work in Asia, that that Turkey region and things of that nature. So, you know, if we're assuming those things are, are accurate, then, you know, it's likely that he's writing to people that are in that area uh, where his ministry was. I mean, it's close enough that he's saying, I'd rather not write with them, but I hope to come to you face to face. Right. And at, at this point, if it's later in John's life, he's not getting around very far like Paul in his younger days kind of a thing. Right? It's got to be relatively close. So either this is someone at the same group as the elect lady. It could be someone in the next town. Right. Like uh, hard to say. But um, you very clearly see this parallel between. There's people that are coming through the churches and they're bringing yep. messages. They're bringing teaching. And in second John, it was watch out for the false ones and the deceivers, the antichrist. And here it's accept and help these, these brothers, right? Really these ones we want to, we want to accept. We want to help. We want to send them on their journey in a manner worthy of God, right? Like really give them your full um, God felt support 
uh, in their mission. And so that's a very drastic difference than second John, which was don't be engaged in their works at all. Right. Uh, yeah. And we see that fellow workers thing there too, right? You'll be fellow workers if you do that. Yeah, exactly. So on, on one hand uh, we have, you know, like second John, we just talked about the, the fact that we need to be discerning to not offer hospitality. Um, but in here, we, we need to be extremely hospitable for those who are working. Now, you mentioned specifically they, they had not received any support from the Gentiles. Yeah. Um, so, uh, you know, I'm not sure exactly what that means. Sure. Perhaps, perhaps they were they were Jewish Christians. Uh, and perhaps Gaius is of the Jewish community. I'm not I'm not sure. Um, yeah. Or if he just means that in sort of the uh, broader sense, the heathen, the nations, the, the Gentiles, right? Uh, it's, know, it's hard that, to say. That's yeah. also true. I hadn't I hadn't thought about reading it that way, uh, but that, that could be very, very true. Um, they're, they're not, you know, accepting help from the, 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 the non-Christian people. Yeah, right. Yeah. Guess, right. Um, but they're, they're out there preaching and doing a good work and, uh, they, they need, and he'd be, he's being commended for the fact that he, he did support them and he did yeah uh, a, a very good work. So. Yeah, and I think we mentioned uh, when we were chatting. I mean, if you look at Second John and you look at Third John, you know what's the distinction? And they're both in verse seven. You know, surprisingly or by on purpose, as you know, whoever was getting the verses did that on purpose. Who can say, right? right? But uh, verse seven in Second John is many deceivers have gone out in the world. Those who do not acknowledge Jesus the Christ coming in human flesh. This is the deceiver and antichrist. And here, verse seven is for these ones have gone out for the sake of the name accepting nothing from the Gentiles. And so you have one group stay away from these ones who deny Jesus, who deny the name and verse seven, accept and help those who have gone out for the sake of the name, right? The name of Jesus, obviously. And so there's your distinction, right? How do I know who to help and who not to help, right? Well, are they doing, are they doing the work of Jesus? Are they doing it for the name of Jesus or are they, you know, against Jesus, are they anti-Christ? Right. Uh, and that's, that's an important thing he says, watch out for it. And, and if you help one or you help the other, you're engaging in their work, right? You're engaging at your a fellow worker in that. Yeah. So we don't want to be a fellow worker with false Antichrist. <laughs> we want to be fellow workers with the truth again, yeah. truth and love. Yep. And so, um, like we mentioned just a few minutes ago, we have to know the truth in order for us to be able to discern Make that distinction, those yeah. who are preaching the truth. Uh, yeah. So it's important for us to abide in the word, abide in Christ, have uh, the truth within us and have the, the wisdom and discernment to, to be able to know. And then of course, be ready to help out. Uh, to do. Yeah. Yeah. You got to do the work. Yeah, and I do like this here that, and in both of them, and it, this is not necessarily something that should be revolutionary to anyone that's listening, I don't think, but just a good reminder that sometimes people will think, you know, oh, I'm not preaching or I'm not going and doing and I'm not whatever, right? That That's fine. It, it doesn't matter because John here says that you can be a fellow worker, you'll be a co-laborer in your support of those things, right? Now, I want us to be very careful because in America, we oftentimes think, and I think we mentioned this, that oh, I can just outsource all of the things that I do with money and that will replace any effort. And so, right. look, I'm not actually going to put in any effort or time for the Lord because I'll just pay for someone else to do all of that. Um, I, I, that's more our problem than the other. But, um, you know, when we when we support those works, when we support those people who are doing the teaching, we are then we're we're equally engaged in that labor right we're equally engaged in that good and that's a common teaching we see throughout the new testament um that the in the christian church that when you those who are supporting the work financially those who are supporting um relief efforts of food financially right they were just as much and you know if, if we're going to use terms that maybe are human in their nature god is giving them just as much credit as the person who's actually delivering the food right god is giving them just as much credit as the one who's actually speaking the message um yeah. your your co-laborers in in the work in that way uh and so you know if you're listening out there and you're like oh all i can do is whatever all i can do is give all i can do is help support it 
fantastic, right? Don't don't sell yourself short on the importance of doing that. Uh, yep. you're, you're just as important in spreading the kingdom work as well, the one who, who's spreading it. I totally totally agree that this is a, an amazing uh, idea and thought process that we need to really dive into each every one of us individually in because of our study through first john the, the the sermon that i preached about us being in the nature of god created in his nature i went through the scriptures and i i tried to make a a, a good list it's not exhaustive at all but a good list of all of the characteristics of god that we can attain we can we can strive to be like and it's things like god is peace god is one god uh is 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 a str- my strength and my refuge can i be strength and refuge for people can i be peace for people you know can i bring a peaceful attitude and energy to to life and to people that i'm around there's so many attributes of god that we can recognize within ourselves like the lady who he wrote to in second john uh she was really good at hospitality that was her god is generous right (laughs) god is generous right yeah and so there's so many things about the nature of god that he created us in we need to be able to, to recognize all of those things are from God and they're not to be, uh, you know, just because you, you're a pinky toe, right? Right. doesn't mean you're not important. God made that pinky toe for a reason. Yeah. Uh, and so every one of us has innate abilities and talents that sometimes we just don't recognize them as a talent. But when you compare who gave it to us and that all of those things came from him, it puts them in a completely different light. And I really think that we should be, you know, recognizing them and just like pouring more energy into being more like those things, because that's, how, that's how we were made by the creator. So anyway, there's it's a sidebar conversation, but it was, it was a, a really interesting thought process for me that that's been helping me grow. Yeah. You know, uh, because there's a lot of there's a lot of attributes of, of God that that I envy. I see I see in other people and I'm like, man, I wish I could be like that. Yeah, yeah. In that aspect, you know, and there are so many people like that in my life. I'm like, man, I, you inspire me <laughs> to I, I really want to be a gentler person sometimes or I want to be, you know, quicker to hear a better listener. Or, you know, I mean, there's so many, because there's so many people like that, that, man, they're just such, every time you have a conversation with them, you are the only person in the universe. Yeah, yeah, right. <laughs> how, how can I be like that? And so recognizing those talents is really important. And we have little things like this, where we have people out there in, in the world that are on journeys, you know, whether they're missionaries or whatever, being able to support those people is a very good work. So don't, yep. don't ever don't sell yourself down. short. Yeah. yeah, exactly. Yeah. So, uh, you know, the wrapping, wrapping up then here, this, this letter, right. He kind of switches tone very drastically in, yeah. in the back half. And this is interesting to me because it sort of maybe suggests that, um, either Gaius has, has read whatever letter John had sent to the church where Gaius was at, or he hasn't any sort of subverting, uh, diatrophies here, right? I wrote something to the church, but diatrophies doesn't acknowledge our authority. So guys, I'm going to write to you, right? And so right. you can take this letter around uh, the back end or whatever. Um, but he he brings up this guy, diatrophies, and he calls him out for a very specific sort of uh, uh, attitude, I guess I would say more than anything, right? He likes to put himself first. I think the old King James is he loves to have the preeminence, I mm-hmm. think is a uh, yeah, yeah, as I'm remembering that from my my younger days. Yep. Um, and so he doesn't acknowledge our authority. Uh, and in the way specifically that he's showing his loving to be in the first place here is that he doesn't want, he, he doesn't welcome these brothers. He doesn't welcome these ones who are coming along, right? Uh, we see these ones that he just calls these brothers throughout the letter, right? 
uh, the, all your efforts for these brothers, strangers as they were. Uh, he refuses to welcome the brothers or these brothers uh, and wants to put them out of the church. So the thing that he's he's pulling at here is his lack of, let's say, hospitality or his lack of uh, support for these these traveling ministers, for lack of a better term, um, and in so do he does that just because he likes to throw his weight around. We might say, right? He wants to know, or he's concerned that when these others come in, and they're bringing whatever message they're bringing, it's going to take away from his. Pe people aren't going to think he's so great anymore, right? Maybe he's the let's call him the local preacher here, right? Maybe he's the person here who does all the speaking and does the things. And he's concerned that these other ones who are coming in are going to take away from his prestige, right? And take away from his shine. Uh, and so he doesn't allow, he doesn't welcome them in. And he tries to stop people like Gaius who would welcome them in, right? He, he says he refuses to welcome the brothers and also stops those who do want to welcome them, right? He, he's really making sure none of these people get in. And, you know, John says here, uh, you know, if I come, I'll bring up what he's doing, right? If, if I come, I'll put a stop to that. But he's he's letting Gaius know as well, hey, you got to watch out for this and you guys need to try and handle this also. It, it would seem likely because uh, it sounds I hope to come to you. So if you never made it there, right, someone's got to deal with the atrophies and, and what he's doing. Um, and that's interesting to me for a couple of reasons, but maybe the, the most interesting is that he doesn't really call out diatrophies on what we might say is uh, his his orthodoxy, right? He doesn't really call out diatrophies on here's the things he believes and here's the things that he teaches. And, you know, as far as we know, diatrophies has got all these things right in a line, right? But what's the problem? It's an attitude problem, right? Mm -hmm. it's, a, it's a practice problem. He'll, right. he'll be happy to preach on and teach on, oh, yes, we should love the brethren. But then when it's time to put it into practice, he's not going to do it, right? He's not going to welcome these brothers here. Yeah. And so that's just really curious and a, and a warning maybe to me uh, that's different than Second John, the ones who clearly just deny the Christ, their orthodoxy is wrong, right? But here it's, yeah. you know, he just, he's got a bad attitude, right? And and the way yeah. he does this and the way he shuts out people is is problematic. Yep. And then, it, then he brings up another specific individual, and I'm not sure who Demetrius is. He yeah. may be, he may be the person that that John is sending these letters with. Yeah, that seems likely, right? That Demetrius is the one who's carrying the letter, right? Yeah. Right. Say, by the way, Demetrius, who gave you this letter, um, has received a good testimony from everyone and from the truth itself. So we had also our testimony, and you know that our testimony is true. So, by the way. Demetrius may be one of these brothers that he kept mentioning. Yeah. Um, receive him because he he's a good yeah. dude. You know, that kind of seems right. Right. There's been previous ones that have come through that have not yep. been received or that Gaius is trying to help and uh, Diotrephes yep. is trying to hinder and causing problems with. And so now here's here's John sending along a letter with a guy named Demetrius. And he's saying, and this is one you should help just in case you weren't sure. This is one who's gone out for the sake of the name. You should help yep. him, right? Absolutely. He's got a good repute of all the people. Uh, God himself would bear testimony about him if he could do that for him uh, in that way that you would hear. And so we add our testimony also, and you know our testimony. We, we're vouching for this guy. Uh, and yep. he's probably the guy carrying the letter uh, as best as we could guess, right? Yeah. Or, or anything else. Uh, but I do like that line in there. You know, we sometimes go, what kind of things can we pull out once it's going to apply? Uh, and there is a we've been looking at uh, Ecclesiastes in our Sunday morning uh, adult class and mm -hmm. you've read Ecclesiastes, right? It's kind of a downer book. Um, but uh, th Throughout there's these, we call them nuggets of wisdom, right? Uh, that you can pull out even in the middle of things being terrible. So we're just looking at, for example, Ecclesiastes four and it's rough, right? Oh, it'd be better than ever been born, right? Kind of a <laughs> stuff at the beginning. I mean, he says that. Uh, and so you're like, what am I getting? But then he does mention, you know, this, this verse we're very familiar with that, you know, if, better to have two than one and a threefold cord is not quickly oh so there's there's a wisdom nugget there right here's a wisdom nugget in uh outside of the main text in in third john in 11 do not imitate evil but imitate good whoever does good is from god whoever does evil has not seen god right uh which is very john as well right about the one who has seen god and you know you know the children of the father they act the way they act right all these kinds yep. of things the one who says he loves uh, God but hates his brother is a liar. Whoever does good is from God. 
whoever does evil, he's never seen God. So friends, <laughs> imitate the ones who do good, right? Yeah. Um, and sort of the the intimation there is when you imitate the people doing good, remember good is from God, right? And if you imitate the ones doing evil, remember if you've evil, you've never seen God. Uh, and it's just kind of tosses that right in there, right? And again, I think is because he's making this comparison to Diotrephes and his actions, right? Are not good. And Demetrius and his actions, they are good, right? So Gaius, imitate the ones who are doing good and not the ones who are doing evil. Uh, but that's just a good wisdom nugget for life in general, right? Uh, like maybe you're saying, I see these people who have good characteristics and good things I'd like. Hey, imitate those people is what John yep. would say, right? Um, do Just do what they do. Uh, yeah. yeah. Paul says that, right? They imitate like that. us, imitate Christ, right? Uh, yeah. So yeah, it's a, this, this imitation uh, thing is a New Testament principle as well. That's um, we sometimes disparage in our day and age, right? Everyone's got to be unique and be creative and be whatever. Right. And the New Testament no. is no, no, no. Imitate, no. imitate, I'm, imitate. I've right? got a pattern. Here's yeah. the pattern. Imitate, oh, imitate oh, us because we imitate Jesus, right? Yeah. Uh, that's what John is adding his two cents to that here as well. Absolutely. Well, again, hey, uh, it's been a, been a great study. Uh, first, second, and third, John. We've uh, exhausted them. There's mm -hmm. probably a lot more we could talk about some of these nuances, sure. but it's good sometimes, sometimes just to take um, you know a quick over overview look at uh, some of these uh, these smaller books and and glean as much as we can from them in a short time. Hope it was profitable for you all. Uh, if you have any needs, uh, please don't feel uh, like you can't reach out. We're willing to help wherever we can. Uh, we like to uh, to to try to put um, you know. Uh, our, our faith in action <laughs> by, by being doers of the word in love. So if you have any needs, feel free to reach out, add the comments below. Uh, any final words, Kev? No, I, uh, like I say, if we're going to carry some out to the week, uh, find someone who's doing good and imitate it. That's uh that's our mission for the week, right? Amen to that. All right. God bless everybody. Have a wonderful week and we will see you next time.